Are you tired of spending hours color grading your beautiful footage only for it to come out looking like this? Then you need Dehancer, a film emulation plugin for Premiere, DaVinci, and Final Cut that does a great job of making your crappy footage look better. And that's not an insult, that's coming from a guy who only shoots crappy footage. Full disclosure, Dehancer contacted me and asked if I would do a review of their product, but they said that they had no requirements for what they wanted me to say and that I could tear them to shreds if need be because they wanted honest feedback. So listen, if I ever get the go ahead to be honest with someone, I'm gonna do it. Um, so buckle your seatbelt, Dehancer. So let's get started. So I have this clip that I shot for a short film and if I wanna color this with Dehancer, this is what my process is. So first I'm going to actually do the basic color grading. So I'm gonna white balance and I'm gonna white balance to this flower back here. And then I'm gonna to come to creative and I'm just gonna apply a LUT on it really fast. And so I love the Mabo film LUTs from the YouTube channel Mabo. I think his stuff is like the best looking stuff ever. He shoots on Sony, I shoot on Sony. And I'm just gonna pop one of these on here. And already we got a nice looking image. Um, I'm gonna dial down the intensity a little bit so that it's not super crushed. And then what I'm gonna do is just add the Dehancer Pro plugin. So as you can see here, we have a ton of different options to give our video the film look that we desire. We have a lot of different things that we can tweak. Um, but first, I'm gonna go to the input setting and make sure that this is set to Rec. 709 since I've already applied a color grade. As you can see, once I put Dehancer on, it made my image look like this, which I do not like. This is not a good looking image anymore. I mean, so you're saying like, why, why did you even put that Dehancer plugin on? Well, you'll see because I have a ton of different options that I can tweak. One of the things that I am gonna tweak is coming down to the film option right here. And then I'm going to switch this to look, look at all this. Look, you have so many different film profiles that you can apply. And so I'll, I'll just click on a random one and you can see that it changes the color. It changes the color. That's more sepia tone. Like they all have their own look. This is black and white. And what I am looking for here in a film stock is I am looking for color. That's what I personally look for. Um, I don't even know if it changes the grain, honestly. I think it just changes the color and the contrast. So that's what I'm looking for. And I have already looked at this and I like the Agfa Agfa Color Portrait XPS 160 for this particular shot. Um, as you can see though, it kind of washed it out a little bit. So the blacks are not as black anymore and the whites are not as white. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But before I dive into that, the other thing that I like to do before I go into all these settings is come down to the print setting and I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about like actual shooting on film. So if that's what you're here for, then get out, you know, exit out right now. But apparently printing is something they do when they're actually shooting on film. It's like the film stock they actually print the footage on or something. I don't know. But all I know in this situation is that changing this profile here from linear to one of these makes it look different. So if I click on Fujifilm, watch, notice the color and the contrast changes. More blues in the shadows, more contrast. This is uh, more pink, and this one is you know, like more yellow orange. So I'm just gonna pick the one that I think complements the color of the shot the best. And this one happens to be the Fujifilm one, uh, the Fujifilm 3513, I think, maybe not. But we'll put that on there and then we will come into the rest of the options to adjust the color. So one of the things you can do to help increase the contrast that you lost by putting this plugin on is coming to the film developer tab. And this just gives you some uh, more options for contrast, like the contrast boost option right here. And I'm just gonna crank that way up to 100 just to show you, and you'll see that nothing actually happened. That's because you need to enable every one of these individual uh, settings. So I'm gonna enable that and crushed it, crushed the heck out of it. So I'm gonna dial that back to like 20 or something. Uh, maybe even a little more, 30. And you can see if I disable this already, I'm getting much more deep blacks and white whites. I think her skin tone needs to be a little bit brighter, so I might increase the gamma a little bit. Um, and generally you just have some options here to adjust the contrast and the colors. One thing, you can come down to the color boost. If you don't think it's saturated enough, you can just crank that up, or you can just give it a little bit. Her skin tones are a little muted right now, so maybe I'd crank that up. Give her skin a little bit more uh, color. Another thing that I like to do is 
come to the film compression tab and it kind of compresses the highlights. It like brings down the highlights so that the, they're not as bright and overbearing. This shot doesn't have a ton of highlights, so I don't know if you'll see it very easily in this one, but I'll show you later. But I like to enable that and you can, you can tell a little bit in her skin tones right here that it just kind of, it kind of mutes the highlights a little bit, which I tend to like in most shots. Um, you might not like it if you want really bright uh, blown out highlights, but I tend to like it. And apparently that is there to represent what film does, because whereas digital is great at shooting in the shadows, film is great at shooting in highlights. And so I think that's there to kind of replicate that. Next, I'm just gonna come down to the film grain, which is the main thing you want from this plugin, because apparently Dehancer doesn't just overlay film grain on your image, it actually analyzes your image in some way. I don't know, it's over my head, and it makes it look more realistic. And that's what we want in a film grain plugin is for your digital photos or digital video to look more realistic. And this is the best one I've found so far, I gotta be honest. You can adjust the size, you can adjust the amount, the film resolution, shadows, midtones, highlights, uh, chroma, like you can, there's a ton of different options. And the ones that I am most interested in are first, I don't tend to like chroma in my film grain, so I'm just gonna take this all the way down. Also the film type, I'm just gonna change to positive because I think it looks a little bit better. You're not gonna be able to tell on YouTube the changes because YouTube compresses the out of videos. You might not even be able to tell there's film grain at all on this, which sucks because of YouTube's compression, but just trust me, it just changes the look of the grain a little bit. Another thing I like to do for some reason is I like to take the grain out of the shadows. So I'm just gonna bring the shadows down to zero and Again, you're not gonna be able to tell, but it takes some of the grain out of her hair, and I just like my blacks like super clean and silky, but that's just a personal preference. Uh, obviously, the size and the amount, I'm just gonna leave that as it is because I tend to like it right there. And then the film resolution is another interesting one. On the default, you have it set at 50, and what this is doing is making your image less sharp. So if I crank this all the way up to 100, it's gonna be as sharp as it was when I shot it. But I can bring it all the way down to zero so you can maybe better tell the effects. I'll even zoom in a little bit, pop this right here. Just look at her eyes or earrings or something. And then I'm going to crank this all the way back up. And you can tell, obviously, there's a lot more sharpness in the earring and stuff. If I bring that back down, super blurry. And this is just uh, to replicate that, that, uh, that, Film look, duh. That's what. That's why it's called dehancer. It's not enhancing your video. It's dehancing it in some way. It's making it look like it was shot on old film cameras, which obviously weren't as sharp as the Sony camera that I'm shooting on right now, which is extra sharp. So you might want to dial that down a little bit. I don't love it at 50%, but I like it like maybe 80 or 75 or something. Um, I do. I am a sucker for sharp images, so I, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Now, here comes the exciting part of this plugin for me. This is like, you can, you can find film grain online and you can overlay it and you can find other film plugins. But what I think makes this particular plugin special are the next four things that I'm gonna talk about. Number one is the halation. Uh, this is something I've not seen in other ones, uh, but maybe I'm wrong about that. The halation is the way that light bleeds in the image. It, it bleeds over into the, like, the halation is the way that, I'm gonna look it up. Halation, the spreading of light beyond its proper boundaries to form a fog around the edges of a bright image in a photograph or a television screen. So basically this is gonna make your image look worse, but better. I'm gonna just go ahead and crank this all the way up with the amplify and the impact uh, setting. And one thing to know is the impact setting for each one of these is basically just the opacity of that particular effect. So all the way cranked up, you're gonna see it fully. So if I enable this, look at her ear right here. That's where it's happening the most, is that you can tell just the light that's reflecting off of her ear is kind of bleeding into the rest of the image. And I love that because it replicates not only film, but like a vintage lens, a good vintage lens with good, uh, just nice looking distortions. The next thing that I think is great about this is the bloom, and I try to get this in all of my shots. Honestly, I, I do this usually by using a black Promis filter on my lens, and that basically that just takes the highlights of the image and kind of just kind of softens them up, spreads them out a little bit, makes it a little bit more dreamy. And I'll show you what this looks like by increasing the impact and the amplify, and I'm just gonna enable that. And you can see right away, it just like smooths out the image. And this for me is, where I want my softness to come from. I showed you earlier that the film grain 
section with the film resolution, you can just dial down the film resolution to make it softer. But this is where I like my softness to come from, is from the uh, bloom effect. But the next two things are something that I have been wanting in a plugin for so long and I have not been able to find it. Uh, and that is the film breath and the gate weave options here. And so if I go to the film breath option and I just, I'm going to, I'm just going to zoom out and sh crank it up to its extreme and show you exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to keep the period there. I'm going to crank the exposure up to 100, tonal contrast up to 100, color up to 100. And I'm going to enable it. And then I'm going to render this. And so here's what you get. It just looks like lights are flashing and the exposure and the contrast are and the color are just changing uh, like it was a really old film. And I think this is a little bit too extreme, but you, you can dial this down and get that very subtle exposure change effect that uh, would happen when the film is going through the, the projector. And I just think giving, this, giving your digital footage this subtle effect really sells the idea, even if the audience doesn't know it, it's almost a subconscious thing. Um, but this is something that I have always wanted. And you can even apply this on like text effects and stuff, I think, which really sell that film look. The other thing that helps sell the film look is the gate weave. And I'm gonna crank this all the way up and show you what this does. And now you can see the film is just shaking. It's just giving the entire image a, a shaking effect, which would happen again if the film was going through the projector. It's not gonna be perfect because it's an analog system and there's gonna be a lot of movement and wiggle. And so giving, obviously again, this, this much is too much, but giving your video a little bit of that wiggle is like crucial for making it look like film. And so those are my favorite aspects of this plugin. And I think it is great that they are all in there because I have, I have been wanting something with all of these options in one place and it's super easy to use and you have enough uh, tweaking that you can tweak. But uh, the next thing I do color wise is if I don't like the look of this, uh, if I don't like the color or the contrast or, or her skin tones are too orange or something, I will come back to my Lumetri color uh, setting over here. And then I will just make some, some adjustments here. Like I think she could be brightened up a little bit and you'll see that the effect changes. Something good to know though is that whether or not your Lumetri color is before or after the Dehancer plugin will affect the way that Premiere processes the colors because right now it's doing the Lumetri color first and then Dehancer. And then if I wanted to add another Lumetri color afterwards, it would be doing that after Dehancer. I don't know exactly what's going on, but just know that depending on where you put your plugins, uh, it's gonna change the way that it interprets what you're doing. For instance, if I were not happy with her skin tones, I would prefer to come up here to the Lumetri color and add a Lumetri color effect and make sure it's after the Dehancer plugin because I don't like doing it beforehand uh, with very specific color adjustments because it just, it's, it's weird. It's the best way I know how to explain it. So I come down here and I would come down to the secondary and select her skin tones, blah, blah, blah. And you know, make her look like a Smurf or something but that's not what I want with this because I'm okay with her skin tones. And I, I think it's more the contrast and the just basic coloring, I think you should do before Dehancer and then more like secondary coloring, I think you should do after, but I could be wrong. Now we have a, I think this is a great looking clip and I haven't had to do much at all. Okay, I just applied a lot, did some basic coloring and then put the Dehancer on, changed the settings to how I like it. So um, real quick, I'll just go through the process in another shot. Let's, let's do this without coloring first and see what happens. So if I don't put my LUT on there and I just use Dehancer, you can actually get some pretty nice coloring just with Dehancer. I wouldn't recommend it, but um, you can do that. So if I come here and I go to input, if, if I'm not coloring first, I have to change this input source from Rec. 709 to choose camera. And since I used a Sony FX3, I'm gonna choose my camera, the Sony FX3, and then uh, S-Log3 Gamut 3.Cine, which is what I shot it in. And you're gonna already get something like this, but I am going to go down to the film section and choose the film that I like the best. And I think it's this one. And then I am going to come down to the print section and choose the Fujifilm 3513. And I just like these uh, these colors. Although I will I will say, 
okay, I'm not going to color with Lumetri. I'm going to just color with Dehancer. The white balance is off here. So I'm going to have to figure a way to change that with only Dehancer. And if, if I come down to the input section, I can change the tint, which I think I will do if I drag that. Yeah, you can drag it up and down. I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit for, for purposes. I'm just going to give it a much more blue tone. Yeah, something like that. She's pretty orange still, but... Um, oh, here we go. A temperature comp as well. That's probably what I need to work on. Hold up. I'm basically just looking at her skin tones right now and just kind of eyeballing how I want her skin tones to look. So something like that, something more neutral. Um, do that, and then I can come down to the film developer, give it a bit of a contrast boost. Usually about 30 works for me. Enable that. That's too much. It's too dark. I want her skin tones brightened up a little bit, so I'm going to come to gamma correction and just crank that up a little bit 40 maybe see what that does yeah that looks pretty nice give a little bit more contrast boost just working with it just working with it just working with it gamma correction take that down a little bit now so i'm going to bring the color separation down a little bit here because that helps with the skin tones a lot for some reason the i'm not sure exactly what that's doing but i have just noticed that the color separation if you bring that all the way down it just kind of like flattens out her skin tones a little bit i will come to the film compression enable that which compresses the highlights Come to film grain, I'm gonna take the chroma out, I'm gonna change this to positive, I'm gonna take it out of the shadows, I'm going to come down to halation, I'm just gonna enable that, I'm gonna crank that up a little bit, amplify, impact, bloom, enable, impact, crank that up, film breath, enable, not changing anything there, gate weave, enable, um, I'm gonna bring the translation of the X and the Y axis up a little bit, so that's what it looks like without any Lumetri coloring. And I think it looks great without, but here's what this same shot looks like with a LUT applied before Dehancer. And here is what it looks like without the LUT applied before Dehancer. And as you can see here, I think the one with the LUT and the color grading beforehand actually just looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more cohesive, uh, especially in this area. But I mean, if you just wanna use Dehancer to color some footage for YouTube or something, you can do that. There's no problem with that. And just so you guys can see as many examples as possible, here are a few different shots. And so I have to say, I love this plugin. I think it's gonna help me a lot, but is it worth it for you? So overall, what are my thoughts on the plugin? I think it is a great plugin. I think it has a ton of different options and it is the best film emulation plugin that I have ever used. And I love the fact that they included halation and bloom and the film weave, the gate wobbly stuff and all that. But the problem is this is an expensive plugin and it's not marketed for the average YouTuber or just individual person who's making their own content. It is $400 for Premiere, I think and even more expensive for DaVinci. So, so because of the price, I think this plugin is more geared towards like small companies or mid-sized companies or even large companies who need to just spice up their videos a little bit and who have money to spare. And for them, I think this is excellent. I think it is great for someone who's maybe making commercials or music videos or something kind of upscale and they need to just bring their video look over the top. And, um, you know, so in, in that regard, I can't recommend this for small creators, but um, if you do have money to spend, I think it is worth it. Also, a note to Dehancer, one thing I would like to see is just more options for the film grain. I know you're probably going for something very specific, but, um, I want to see like dirt and and just more, I want to have the option to make my film look really gross and dirty. And I don't, because I'm going to have to go online and download overlays for if I want something like very dirty anyway. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's not what you want to do with your plugin. Um, but that's what I would like. If I'm paying that much money for a plugin, I want even more options. You have a lot of options already, but I want even more options just to customize the look of my film. Even to just throw in a, a VHS plugin for free in there, you know, to make my film or to make my video look like VHS. I want to, I just want all the options if I'm paying that much. Um, but overall, a great product and I do recommend it for certain people. So 
there you go.